here. Good. Good, good, good. Um, clear. My main purpose of doing this stream is just to record this particular use case, which um, just because this is tricky to keep track of, having a video will help me reconstruct um, what happened. Um, again, this is all taking place on my test server. Um, so first I'm going to attempt to identify a use case because um, I know I've seen take backs not work correctly for simuls and I need to identify well how's that different than take backs not working for um, uh, for ex or for correspondence games because there's a belief that take backs do work in correspondence games so there's got to be a difference but the question is, as always, is what? What is that difference? Um, all right, so let's give this a whirl. I've got like a million tabs open, but I think that's enough tabs to do this test. Um, so let's not pop open the chat window right now. It's up there in the background. Got three Lee Chess windows open. Start. Okay, so I'm going to play e4. I'm going to play e4. Then on each of the opponent boards, I'm going to play e5. And I'm going to play e5. And then I'm going to play knight f3. Knight f3. And then both opponents are going to offer take backs. I'm going to accept take back one. Oops. Damn it. Um, I can't replicate my use case if I can't auto switch. Uh, that's my mistake. All right. So am I on the board that has more or less time? It doesn't matter, though. Uh, I need my opponents to play moves because... Since I played a move, that's the same as like rejecting a take back offer. Um, so I have to be on the board which has more time than the other board. Um, so right now both my clocks are ticking down. Now let's play this on one board and sit on the other board for a little while. And I know I had this use case earlier. Um, I'm just struggling to identify exactly what it is. But something in between the auto switch and the take back button isn't working right. And I blamed this on simuls, but I shouldn't have. I jumped to conclusions there. It was unnecessary to do so. So, um, so after a moment's thought here, I'm going to play a move. Um, and then I'll have both opponents offer me take backs. Okay, so um, here's the one where I have more time than the other board. Alright, how do I do this test? So both opponents offer take backs, the one that I'm not sitting at and the one I am sitting at. I mean, I could toggle between these and see that indeed both offers are standing. But somehow, um, I'm forgetting how I did this. It was beautiful. It only took a few moves. Um, I'm just struggling with how did I do it. I did take back accept, switched boards, did another take back accept, switched boards again, and did a third take back accept, when there shouldn't have been no offer the third time. So, which board has less time? This one has less time, so we're going to start here. We're going to accept this. 
we're going to go back, accept that, and auto switch, and uh, I'm flustered. Whatever. I don't understand. There was a bug. I found it this morning. I'm not just losing my mind here. Maybe it was that the host offered the take back on one board and the player offered the take back on the other board. Um, Alright, so we'll accept the offer. It's are we still on the board? We're still against AI level 2. AI level 2 is offering a take back. Okay, it's my move again. I'll play knight c3. Somehow I didn't board switch. Oh, because it's not my move on the other board. But as soon as the opponent plays a move, their take back offer goes away, which is also wrong in my opinion. But that's at least not broken. Um. Somehow I managed, though, to obtain a take back that should not have been possible, and I don't remember how I did it. Okay, let's switch boards. Oh, it's, again, it's my opponent's move on the other board when they're offering the take back. Yeah. Okay, now they hit the offer take back after they played knight c6. But that isn't offering. But now they hit it again. Okay, that does offer the take back. So then if I accept, it should put me back on board one, but I want it to be my turn on the other board. No, I think this is okay. Take back. Um, huh. Oh, right, it's not my turn on the other board, so I didn't auto-switch. This is confusing. I'll figure out what the use case was sooner or later. I don't know how many attempts it will take me to figure it out, but there is a bug here somewhere. I saw it. I'm not crazy. Well, at least I saw it. We'll stick with that. Um, opponent offers a take back. I'm still on this board. Oh, because it's still my opponent's turn on the other board. Um, okay, now we switch to the other board. I play move on the other board. Um, I offer a take back on board one. Uh, or uh, against level 2, uh, I offer a take back against level 1. I'll stay here. Um, but now I'm only offering take backs on my move. Okay, but no, I could trigger a board switch to make it my move on the other board like this. Ah, but on that board I have too much time. So there is... well this should have triggered a board switch. The fact that the take back got accepted and now I have a different active game. It's not my move on this board, but my opponent did it, accepted my take back offer. So now I should switch boards to the board that has less time, or the board that it's my move on. Um, I don't know what the condition is under which we normally do a board switch, but that should have done it. Um, similarly, like if my other opponent accepts here, you see down here where, well, you see part of the board. I'm going to accept the take back proposal, which does not end up triggering a board switch. Um, but I think what does trigger a board switch is if my other opponent um, makes a move. So, like if AI level 2 here is going to like play knight f6, 
this brings me over to their board, but mm -hmm. them accepting a take back offer, which makes it my move, does not trigger a board switch. So that's a bug. That is a bug. Um, there might be others. But that that's definitely an edge case there where I am the simul host, I make a move, and then I offer a take back of my own move. Um, that's something that I have to either test or forbid. Um, either way, it's a bit tricky. But yeah, I swear, I saw something, something very unusual where I managed to hit the take back button three times in a row. I'm sorry, the accept button three times in a row against just two take back offers. Which doesn't make any sense in my understanding of how that is supposed to work. Um, Okay. I wonder who that is. Like, who's got a problem that... I don't know. I don't get that. Um, but okay, we're gonna change directory to modules to simul. Switch. Where are we going to find switch here? Oh, we're not. Um, so that must just be the... This is weird. I know the switch is switchable as a concept... Oh, hang on. Let's just see the scale of source code that matches this pattern. Um, it has to be a... It's a very overloaded verb now, isn't it? Um, render player. All right, so there's got to be something, some way that. too much. Um, there's got to be some way to indicate that we have to do a board switch uh, within simuls. Um, so how do I do that? What sends out that notification that, oh here's simul API. Um, it certainly has the word simul in it. So we can create a simul, we can do stuff with applicants. Um, on player connection. Oh, hang on. Host, current host ID's cache. Um, So this is presumably what the host uses to figure out which game to go to next. I mean, I don't know. Reading source code is always tricky. Although it's best to do it in a terse language, such as Scala or Haskell. Because um, at least that way you're not searching through um, lots of language-specific terms.
see it. My question is how do we notify a player that one of their opponents um, let's, let's look for auto switch instead of just switch okay so we ended up with a whole bunch of translations for auto switch not exactly what we're looking for um, I don't suppose that there's something out of the internationalization module that... No. Alright. Um... <laughs> is simul... Oh right, is simul is defined by their modules, so... <laughs> Might be simul <laughs> equals game dot is simul. That is lovely. Um is switchable. Alright. Uh, we define a function and then never use it anywhere. That makes sense. Um, well, no, okay, we use it in the application. Uh, presumably when a move is made is switchable. Oh, so we expose is switchable to um, to the UI. And the UI takes care of whatever I've got to do um, to render other games. Um, okay, urgent games. So what updates urgent games, and how do I update that when a take back occurs? Oh, most urgent game, even better. Well, no. That's just find the first thing out of urgent games. Um, got the lobby. I don't know why the lobby has something to do with urgent games. Oh, I guess you can see, you can order your games by urgency. In fact, that's the default ordering. When you're looking at a player's games, you see them ordered by most to least urgent. Um, right, because there's now playing and such. Right, right, right. So... But... Okay, I guess we'll look at the definition of urgent games here. Um, we'll look at the games that they're now playing. And sort with priority of the point of view. Oh, so a take back might need to adjust priority. I don't know. Now playing. Um. Where is now playing defined? Here it is. Lobby API. Now playing is equal to create a JSON based on all this stuff. Um, that game, that collection of games identified as those which we're now playing. Um, okay, no, I'm sorry, now playing is just a JSON of points of view from application of lobby API apply. So, that's interesting. In the lobby you can see all the games that you're involved in. Um, that gets stale when takebacks occur. All this work just so Zug can do takebacks and assimals when he messes up. 
But yeah, people can... That I could see that you could potentially weaponize the take back button too. So maybe... Maybe this is an endeavor that's not worth pursuing, even though like every other site allows take backs and simuls, and over the board you can do take backs. It's not... Apparently it's not a critical feature. Because... There, there's just so many pieces into how that's put together. It, um, the ability to play a simul just kind of evolved over time here, didn't it? Um, Leela Game Query now playing. Which searches for each uh, game that I'm playing. Oh, just reduce that to a string. Uh, okay, that's clever. And then we add to this document the things that we're now playing. This something that's um, where a move has been conducted in the last five minutes. Um, But this doesn't consider, um, yeah, this does not consider things where a take back has occurred in the last five minutes. But yeah, when I'm doing moves and take backs in rapid succession, um, it shouldn't matter in terms of filtering. Um, I guess the document itself, well that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's take a look at this file, takebacker.scala. So both players agree to a takeback. First one offers a takeback, the second one hits yes. Um, you either do a single or double take back. You send out messages uh, to the players that a take back has been accepted. Um, and then we save. We persist um, in our list of take back offers what has occurred. But we do not, like, I don't know. Okay, before I guess, I guess before I go too far, let me test one other thing. I haven't changed any code as far as I can recall, so I should still be able to test this. Where I go to the home page, assuming, well, it's seeming to suggest that I've changed some code, but I don't think I have. I should be able to get to the home page. Um, let's, okay, so yeah, I found the home page. We're going to create a, um, 14 days per turn correspondence game. Random color, create another one, random color. And then each opponent is going to go to the lobby. I guess I didn't need two different opponents. Uh, I could have done this with the same opponent in both cases. Wait. Um, and then I should be... Oh, I need to change my preferences to allow myself to select this game, um, despite the rating difference. Uh, if I want my uh, privacy settings to set to... No, allow anyone to challenge me. So why can't AI level 2... AI level 2 is a legit opponent, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, this, this account is legit. Does it have a course? It's played 12 correspondence games. Is that a problem? I don't think so. Um, AI level 2 should be able to see my seek in the lobby. Assuming it's filtering correctly, maybe it's not. 
How do I filter to see this? It looks like my filter is wide open, but okay. Um, okay, it's going to create a correspondence 14 days per turn. Uh, random color seek. Okay, that matched up. So, despite not being able to see my seek in the lobby, AI level 2 was still able to accept my seek. Um, okay, so what I'm going to attempt to demonstrate here... Okay, let's go to my games. You can see I'm playing two games here. One against level 1, one against level 2. I guess in one case I got white, in one case I got black. That might help me differentiate between what I'm doing here. So, play E4. Um, so now, well, let's get some moves on both boards first. E4, E5. On uh, the other game, we'll play D4 and D5. Um, confirm. D5. All right. So I'm trying to remember how I did this. Basically, I want this to auto switch, but in a way that forgets to reset my take back button. Um, I think I do have auto switch on, right? Yes. So we can do D4. And somehow, despite having auto switch on, it did not. Oh, it's not my turn on the other board, is it? No. I guess now it will be. Oh. Okay. So auto switch for correspondence does the same thing as auto switch for simuls. It'll only switch if it knows that your opponent has moved. Apparently no notification goes out that your opponent has in fact moved. This should show that C4 has been played. Um, so, okay, so there's no difference here between how simuls work and how um, uh, correspondence works. I guess in turn what that means is that um, I don't need to worry about takebacks doing the same thing that correspondence does because whatever. It's still a concerning use case that auto switch does not in fact auto switch, but it's not a concern that's exclusive to simuls. So um, I can stop worrying about that at the moment. Um, so let's actually check out um, the work I did for take backs. Check out. First, we're going to obliterate my local changes, um, which are quite few. undo these local changes to files, one of which was automatically done due to a formatting error that uh, the compile environment fixed for me. Alright, so then then we're going to check out the simul take back branch. Um, get reset um, head minus one. status. Alright, so get reset hard was probably a harder reset than what I wanted to do. Um, whatever. Um, 
let's actually just remake these couple changes um, rather than try to pull them from the git repository. So I just changed the definition of take backable to allow for simuls, as well as changing um, the game.scala. Uh, say that take backs are proposable um, in simul games. It add our oh, git status. Get add modules game as well as UI game. Um, all right, so my commit message for this when I did it the first time was allow takebacks and simuls. Um, So put that back. So what we'll find is that now our diff for um, allowing takebacks and simuls is a lot simpler. Um, backed out things that may not be necessary. Um, um, <laughs> Oh wait, I should reload this page and reload all my clients. Just so I've got a live connection to my de uh, test instance here. So we got my board, my other board, where it's actually my move. Um, for some reason I didn't auto switch when my opponent moved. Oh, but when I toggle the setting, then of course it switches me. Which is funny. Um, I guess if I know it's my move on the other board, that's the condition. Here, let's do a take back um, on each board. Um, that's interesting too. Okay, so if I take back, if I accept on this board, it's still my move. If I accept on the other board, now it's my move on the other board. Um, and it didn't auto switch me. But that's okay, because that's a known issue. At least it's known to me. Um, so... How do I make sure... How do I set up the thing I was trying to test? Okay, I'd rather that both of my opponents got me into a position where I could offer a take back, but... Um, nope, that's not the right move. This one. Okay, and then my opponents are going to move, like knight c3. Oh, auto switch doesn't even work for... Interesting. Yeah, somehow notifications aren't going out. I must have hit... Uh, for this to work, I must, um, I don't know. I saw something strange this morning, I just can't replicate it, but also, I find it entertaining or interesting that, oh wait, no, okay, um, under this condition, auto-switch works. If I move, and if the server knows that there's another game for me to go to, under that condition, auto-switch switches. But it does not auto-switch, um when I don't know that it's my move on a different board. It's, already, it's only when I already happen to know that on um, the other board it's my move. Uh, which I didn't know here. Yeah, it's not my move on either board. 
So let's make it my move on both boards. Um... And then we'll do a manual switch, and a manual switch back. Okay, so if we happen to know that it's our move on both boards, um, auto switch kicks in beautifully. Um, if we make a move, and then one of our other opponents makes a move, at least in correspondence mode, it does not auto switch you. I think in simuls, though, I've seen that work. But in correspondence, um, there's not that same urgency. Um, so there's a functional difference between uh, correspondence, where you don't have this urgent need to auto-switch every time your opponent makes a move. Um, let's see. If, so I'm going to have both opponents offer a take back and see if I can duplicate that weird issue I saw earlier. Um, So we accept the take back, accept the take back. Okay, there's no accept button this time. Maybe it was just a fluke. Or if it's a reproducible issue, somebody will discover how to do it. Um, but somehow I did multiple take backs and uh, sent me auto switching through the boards. Um, and in such auto switching, the take back button, take back accept button stayed illuminated when it shouldn't have. But I don't remember how I did it. And I can't seem to reproduce it at all. Um, okay, so I accept, I accept. Oops, did not mean to offer a draw. Okay, we're offering a take back. Um, I'll offer another take back, offer a take back, another take back, and abort the game. Aborting does not switch, but it shouldn't need to unless you happen to know it's your move on the other board. And even then, that might not be appropriate. Okay, so we abort this game, too. And yet, my seek still remains out there. Okay, well, something interesting's going on. But, um, I think what I can conclude is that I don't need to make all those changes. Um, earlier this morning, I did verify that uh, takebacks and simuls do work. However, I have to give some thought to how that may be weaponized, if at all, and how to protect against such weaponization. Probably there should be a cooldown button on the takebacks, and it's probably much more important to do that than it is um, with uh, the draw button, if I had to guess. Um, like the takeback situation button, or class. Um, find that class uh, uncompiled over here. Uh, so here we go. Um, this keeps track of seconds since the last take back offer. Um, and some concept of has this been declined. So I guess that's something we're already defending against. Um, but one thing that's not so clear is that um, if a move occurs that players wish to execute... Well, no, okay, it makes sense that if I offer a take back and I make a move, I might not still be offering the take back. I might not be interested in the take back anymore. But uh, I should still be able... Uh, to offer one, despite the fact that I moved. Um, so what I'm talking about, let's create a game. If 
14 days correspondence. We'll take white. Uh, opponent accepts. So what I'm talking about is I play e4. Um, my opponent plays e5, and then they're like, "Dope, I want to take back." Um, and I say, mm, "I didn't see that. I just play knight f3." Um, oh, this offer's still on the table. Okay, I decline it, but then I say I want it after all. Um, I think that's the situation that is kind of wonky. But I can get around not being able to offer the take back by doing a force refresh, and now I can offer it again. Um, and likewise, my opponent could move, maybe not seeing my offer. Um, but now can they accept the take back? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so the only thing that's a bit wonky is if I decline a take back offer and then I suddenly want it. Which is kind of a corner case and it's something both players can work around and a force refresh works around it too. But I think what's key there is that I'm the one who declined the offer and then I'm like, wait, actually I meant to take that. Um, so this last decline should be filtering by who did the declining. Um, like, I don't know, this should be a map of who did which last declining action. Um, so this should be not only an option of a date time, but an option of a map of a color to date time, in my opinion. Um, so how do we do maps? Is there a concept of a map here? Grab map in modules and then include just the source code files not the compiled stuff uh, okay so yeah it is possible to map a, a type um, so let's say map uh, with color oops I need to end the string there we go so this should this is something more like what we want. Um, last declined. It's going to be an option. This needs to be a map of color to option date time. Just totally going to break everything for a moment. But yeah, this is the last time that an opponent um, made an offer. Okay, so clear. Let's see how many things I broke by changing the data type definition and then... Oh. Yeah, I'm s let me see what I can do about that. Um, let me see, because that's where the command line appears. Um, um, yeah, right. Alright, I try not to do too many interesting things on the command line, but if I can rearrange my entire environment, maybe there's a way I can get the chat to show up there. Or, sorry, to get the um, chat to not completely occlude what's going on here. Um, how did I, how am I going to do this? I could marquee the chat with a transparent background or something. Um, that's not a great solution. Um, maybe there's a way that I could get my command prompt to not be the bottom line of the screen. Maybe I could, like, pad. I don't know. Um, alternatively, I could take this entire thing 
Although well, that wouldn't work either. Um, yeah, how do I do this? I mean, I could move my chat up to the top. Oops, that's not it. I could move my chat up to the top here. But then you're not going to see what I'm typing at the top of the screen either. Um, so what do I do? How do I get my prompt to show up? I guess I could do a second capture that captures just the bottom line of the screen. But then that won't work when I'm editing a file. Um, yeah, no, I, I really need some way to configure my terminal to put blank space or padding at the bottom. I guess I'll experiment with that uh, offline and see if I can come up with something, but I'm not optimistic. Um, I do use OBS. Yes, I do. Okay, last declined. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, wait. So even the declaration of this needs to be... However you define a map in Scala new map um yeah i don't know how do you define a new empty map i mean that already feels like this isn't the right approach but um uh, new map in modules is there an example well there's just the one i made um, wait. Those pieces that collect. Um, okay. Colors has a different meaning here. Okay, my mistake. Um, I guess I want to search for colors with a capital C. Okay. Because I know color is a class. Um, because there are two colors in a chess game. There's white and there's black. Um... Okay, forget the map concept for a second. Um, let's do things without getting fancy. Um, a map would be a pure object-oriented approach. Uh, okay, we don't need all this fanciness here. We just need the last declined. Um, Modules shows us well, lowercase none as opposed to capital none. That's what used to be here. But also we need to keep track of the last color to decline. So we'll say last declined color also equal to none. Um, oh, but wait, 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 wait. No, I think this is enough data. We don't need to keep track of a full who declined what. 
sort of thing. Um, oh wait, but no, the reason I wanted to keep track of declining per color is that, um, yeah, this says how many times we've declined takebacks defines when the next takeback offer can occur. Um, but if one player's routinely been declining takebacks and the other hasn't, that doesn't help. Like, if player A has been declining offering takebacks the whole game, player B has routinely been declining them, and then player B suddenly wants a takeback, um, he should be able to offer that, because he's not the one who's spamming the takeback button. Um, but the idea that you need to keep a full history is kind of silly, too. Um, really, what's relevant here is, per color, how many takebacks have been declined, and what was the last time of uh, decline? Um, So this is, should be a take back situation per color. These are spaces here, right? Yes. Color. Hang on. Uh, this would go. Yeah, no, actually, this would be in. This is the constructor. Uh, color. Decline equals takeback situation. <sighs> so this, when we decline a takeback, we need to say which color um, is doing the declining. Or I'm sorry, which somehow we need to specify color there. Um, reset equals takeback situation. I'm not so sure what that's for. I guess we'll find out what consumes this in a second. So we'll say compile. But yeah, what would be great is if I had a way to share my entire screen. I don't want to reduce the number of lines that I have visible to me, but if I have to do that, I guess I have to. Um, and in so doing, I'd probably have to just say, like, if I'm in this console mode, put a blank line before or after my prompt, or two blank lines, or however many has to go there. Um, actually, here's a thought. In this mode, maybe there's a way I can capture everything minus, like, the tab up there. Yeah, let's let's try to do this via cropping the stream or the browser. Um, filters. We'll apply just a standard crop and say so just crop off the uh, top X pixels here. See, is that completely remove the... Okay, so now there's dead space at the bottom, but we can deal with that dead space by increasing the chat window size. Um, something like that. That will work. Okay, this way I'm dealing with a lot less screen real estate, but at least you guys are able to see the command line. If I tab over, you're able to see everything in the browser that I see too. Um, it's just I don't have as much real estate to work with anymore. But I guess this is a better experience for development. Um, and when I play games, I'll have to remember to change this back to the perspective that does everything full screen. Um, 
That'll work. At least until I find a better solution for padding inside this uh, shell here. So now what? Um, all right, I was gonna say compile and see how this breaks. Because this doesn't compile. This must break because I changed a data type. So yeah, this is the Leechus project. Um, you can find this live at leechus.org. Um, there are thousands of games, thousands of concurrent players uh, daily, or just routinely. Uh, you'll always be able to find people there. There's always games going on. There's even a TV where you can just watch other people play. Um, Oh, did I forget something syntactically? Line 290. Yeah, I forgot I need a comma. Actually, wait. Oh, last declined. Number declined. But take back situation. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully this will work better. Uh, if I put um, my commas where they need to be and declare my variables appropriately. I wonder if there's a command line. Um, I don't know. Something that does... I Maybe I should do my development like Emacs or something. I wonder if there's a way to do Scala development that does all the compilation for you and shows you the warnings so you don't have to annually go compile stuff. But it wouldn't be much faster for any one of these steps here because, um, well, I guess uh, syntax highlighting could show me when I do something that just abjectly doesn't work. Of course I should use Emacs. Oh, okay. We have an Emacs apologist in the host, guys. Uh, house. Uh, now that's cool. Uh... All right. I know, like, um, Mike the other day was trying to convince me that I should just, like, um, install Emacs, but put it in, like, install evil mode, and that way get a Vim emulation, or Vim experience from Emacs. Um, so I could use all my familiar keyboard shortcuts. Uh, unfortunately, that did not quite work so well, but maybe the next time I upgrade my OS, maybe they'll have a package that works better. I don't know. Um, take back situation equals L. Oh. Okay, so... Yeah, this is where I want to have a map of situations per color. Grip color dot each in modules. Okay. Locate color dot scale. Of course, of course. Um, view this. White extends color, black extends color, random extends color. Color dot all. White, black, and random. I would expect there to be a enumeration of um, just white and black somewhere. That kind of definition seems kind of fundamental to the game. But what do I know? Uh, Oh, here we are. Case class map. White, black. 
um, color dot white white else black for all predicate exists predicate map um, mm -hmm. how do I just build a map that has one value for each element or it has a and even an empty map per color would be great. Object map. Apply A. For color to A. Oh, here we are. Okay, so how do I do map apply? Um get the sense that map apply is not something I just directly call. Oh, end scene. End seam. All right. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit more than a month ago, we'll say. But, yeah, I'll... Yeah, I struggled with that. Banged my head uh, with a, f uh, a few hours trying to get that configured right. Didn't quite get it. Might try it again sometime, but not up to it at the moment. Um, it should have been easy, too. <laughs> so it's unfortunate I couldn't figure it out, but oh well. Um, oh, color.map is maybe the name of this thing? I don't know. Each color extends color. We've got map apply. Oh, color.apply, various expressions. strange. Yeah, I guess it doesn't surprise me that uh, Emacs on Windows doesn't work that great. Um, so I'm gonna guess color.map is not something... oh, check that out something you can actually use. Well, let's use that. Um, take back situation. Uh, it's going to be color.map of this somehow. I'll take a closer look at how that works, because um, that syntax is wrong. So we declare that this is a, of that type. Okay, so we have to have a type declaration and then a construction. Um, where's the construction? So I've already looked at those other classes. That's no fun. But how about this one? Um, oh, white expression, black expression. Nice. Okay. So that's the usage of this. So I would say this is of data type. Um, well, I guess I'm not declaring the data type because uh, apparently we don't need to do that in this context. But I could say color.map situation, comma, round dot take back situation and then I have to say which color we've got in each situation and that should that aspect of that file should compile everything that consumes it is going to fail as well as um, perhaps some of the definitions inside there might not be that great Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Um, but because um, this is indexed by color, I don't need to keep color in take back situation itself. Nor do I need to um, parameterize any of this. It's just that, um, yeah, this take back situation doesn't need to know anything about color, it's just a data structure. Um, 
falls entirely on the consumer to know that how to handle that map. Um, again, the, what the situation here that I'm trying to address is that player A um, declines a take back offer and then elects that actually they meant to hit the accept button and tries to offer a take back, but they're blocked from doing so by the fact that they just declined a take back offer. Um, the reason I'm fixing that is because I want to test that take backs and simuls work. I saw some really strange error happen this morning. I've not been able to replicate it, but I know what I saw. Like, it was. Um, I was playing a simul against two opponents. Um, both opponents offered me a take back. I accepted the first take back, I accepted the second take back, and I accepted the third take back, even though there was no third take back. Somehow I managed to do three take back accepts in a row, um, which is cheating, but it worked great. Um, the button was there. But yeah, I was like switching games as I was accepting take backs, and it was messy. It was the most complicated possible usage of auto switch and take back. It didn't work right. It'll probably work right when they go rewrite some of the uh, front end stuff, like they're planning to do, but I don't know. I haven't been able to replicate it. It's frustrating. Um. Okay, so take backer. Um, take backer is the class I've been editing. No, no, round is the class I've been editing. Uh, take back situation. Yeah, so this, the context where we consume this, need to select out of that for some color and insert into that for some color. Um, too many arguments for method apply. Okay, so let's start here. Line 293. Um, okay, so then we'll go back um, up here. Line 168. Take backer, yes. So we need to get the situation for some color. Um, right now we'll do the naive thing. And just index by pov.color. Um, I think color is an attribute of pov. Let me double check. pov is of type Leela game pov which you can find over in modules game source main pov.scala is color an attribute? color is an attribute in the constructor of this so line 168 here yeah, we could just say take back or yes based on pov.color. Um, in fact, why don't I try just a simple uh, uh, find and replace, which is not entirely appropriate, but yeah, like this context, we shouldn't have it. But in most cases, we do need to have this indexing going on. Um, all right, and then let's compile and see, did my find and replace do all the magic? In many cases, it just works out. But um, in some cases, some cleanup uh, is necessary. The fact that I'm doing find and replace, though, suggests that there's a more uh, succinct way to write the code. Um, 
So all this, just so I can make sure that the take back button works when it's supposed to. Actually, in terms of the UI, like, the UI allows you to hit the buttons to, like, offer the take back after you just declined one. It's just that the server won't allow you to do that. So I, thankfully, I don't have to tweak the UI code. Um, but yeah, it makes sense that like if I just offer to take back, I should be able, or if I just declined one, I should be able to offer one. Um, okay. This is apparently not the syntax for indexing by a color. Well, no. I mean, do I have to say dot get or something? How do I index into a map in Scala? Oops, did not mean to full screen. Scala map index. I mean, I could say for each, yada yada, but I need to just. Um, map get. Can I not use brackets for that? I think I have to use dot get. Apparently what I did is forbidden. Um, Maybe this actually somehow makes the language easier to work with if you're not introducing overloaded, uh, or I'm sorry, not introducing syntactic sugar like that. Um, does this compile? I keep hitting full screen there. I'm not used to um, not accustomed to dealing with this in not full screen mode. Um, so yeah, curly brackets are denoting a scope, right? It indicates a block of code or a scope. Um, they can be used instead of parentheses for parameter lists of error D1. Um, well, that's cool that you can take an expression and not have to use parentheses for that. So you're not stuck with like Lisp-like syntax, where you're just passing parentheses here, there, and everywhere. You can use braces to denote an expression. Um, I wonder how that works. It must be a lot of work for the compiler. Just to allow uh, developers to write slightly more terse code. I guess while I'm at it, let's check on how the tests are doing. What's up in the air at the moment? Um, so, uh, I guess I can also argue with some of the developers. Um, since there doesn't seem to be much going on on the task thing. I can argue with Vinvin here. He's apparently a fun person to argue with. Yeah. I too think a dedicated team forum team thread of uh, HS forum thread ETC would be appropriate. I am an active member in Leech's um, forums. 
Oh, can I sub-bullet this, I wonder? Can I sub-bullet? Yes, I can. Leech us forums, namely... Let's get the name of lists of these forums that I participate in, which are... Leech us feedback. Uh, coders. Um, <laughs> crazy house engine development and game analyses. Um, and Q and A. So, I guess I should link to all of these in my answer. Um, I mean, yes, I participate in more than just that. Additionally, I am an active member in the Leechess Discord. Okay, Leechess Discord, which we can find over here. Um, that's not it. Okay, where'd it go? This one. Let me know um, um, I think any and or all of the above are viable options uh, for reporting um, For non, for discussion of non-reproducible issues. In fact, I have created um, of issues not reproducible in latest Stockfish. In fact, I have already created such a thread, and people are refusing. And apparently, nobody other than myself is using it. And then we'll go over back to where I created this. Um, and then... Uh, actually, this, this is going a bit too far. I didn't actually create such a thread, so I can't say that. I did create a XY problems thread. Um, um, but actually, no, I'm accurate. Um, Perhaps due to its negative connotation, but then again, 
why how can we fix problems um, then again if an issue cannot be reproduced um, how can we in code solve problems which are not caused by coding. Then again, we can only change the development of the engine. its usage. Um, but uh, one I know uh, perhaps due to its negative connotation that coding cannot fix all real world problems especially Those which are not, those which are undefined and are ill defined. And or non reproducible. Um, let me know if I need to provide my mailing address. Phone number fax number work extension and or another means of contacting I don't know I suggest someone pick one of the above options since apparently um, I've done everything short of volunteering my phone number and mailing address uh, to suggest ways to contact me. I don't know. Um, and yet the issue tracker still seems to be the most convenient Still using the issue tracker to report ill defined and or non reproducible issues. In Stockfish, not in Leechus. Devoted to tracking uh, how Leechus deploys, how and when uh, Stockfish updates. Uh, there we go. Less snark, more constructive feedback. So.
one or more of the above options. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell people other than like I've done everything I can. Alright, what do we got here? Ah, uh, yeah. Alright, so I noted earlier this morning you can do Crazy House 960 online. Right, so what do we got? This is compile. Get is not a member of map. Like hell it isn't. Um... Um, well, let me take a look. Maybe it isn't. Um, maybe I have to call something else. Uh, that's not it. I mean, this says map for each color, etc. Um, I guess the function is map as opposed to get. Um, okay, so let's go edit this. Let's give this a whirl. Pilot again. Um, let's see, what else is new in the world? We'll have to start playing some games soon, because this is getting a little... Um, it's interesting, these guys have been suggesting, you know, it'd be great if Lee Chess went out of their way to support these $600 chess boards. Um, 600 is apparently the sale price. You can buy them and accessories for even more if you wanted to. And uh, we're observing that, you know, apparently there is already a commercial solution that uh, offers, I don't know what the price is, but I'm going to assume 5 bucks, 10 bucks, something, that you can hook up the $600 board to the internet and to any chess site. Um, but you're asking for a Leechus native mobile app solution, not third-party part, not third party software or an e-board alternative. Um, be cool if the mobile app had native DGT support. Um, like here we got a mobile device that has um, apparently some kind of support for something. I don't know. And he's saying it'd be great, you know, if we... You know, I bet if this fellow were to donate a $600 board to a developer, they might think about doing it. Um, not myself, because I'm bad at mobile development, but maybe, I don't know. If they donated one of these boards to our mobile developer, maybe he'd do something. Maybe not, because he probably has better things to do. Especially because you can't hook up a little phone in your hand to a chessboard. Um... As far as I know, like, DGT boards aren't Bluetooth, right? It's just... okay. Map with alternatives. Um, cannot be applied to color. Okay, take back situation, returning a color map. Um, both method or method map and class map of type B, take back situation, returning B for color map B. Um, or B for this. Oh, wait. Um, no, I really am looking to just get in this context. How do I do assignment in this map? 
I don't suppose that color map has a set method, does it? Where are we looking? It's got Scala. Update. Color function A to A. Um, So I'm not looking to do what I said I did there. I want to just update the map. Um, oh, but does this need a function for update? I don't want to create a function. I just want to... Um, <laughs> uh, this is crazy. I guess Scala offers immutability, which means that the original map stays put, but I'm creating a new map. Um, Man, how confusing. How confusing. Yeah, I guess update is appropriate. Although this creates a copy of the map, but that's okay. Um, so... Oh, wait. Uh, take backer dot yes. Oh man, I'm so confused. Get diff. What have I changed in this file? I still think this is correct, that I need a map consisting of two take-back situations. Um, but once I have visibility to that particular take-back situation, then what do I need to do? Or do I need the take back situation to contain a map of... I mean, no, this looks like the right abstraction. That each player has, or each color has a take back situation, which could be different. Um, yeah, I think this line 168 that I changed here can be reverted. So it's just saying, taking these two arguments, do the following. Uh, and then we want to update this. To that. And do an update here as well. Try to compile it again, and hopefully, it only mutate what needs to be mutated. Even though types are actually immutable, but whatever. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Crazy computer analysis no longer updates info. Oh, it's fixed. Nice. Why not also add checkers? <laughs> That's a great sentiment right there. Is this guy still around? I don't know if he's an active player though. Alright, so... Checkers cannot be described by PGN, so not, it's not going to be part of Leech Us. Um, man, people are really hung up about that.
Oh dear. I mean, ICCS checkers. People seem to really be hung up on, well, we need draughts instead because checkers is too easy. Um, but I contend that, like, draughts is way too hard to do an ultra bullet. It's not possible to do ultra bullet draughts with an enormous board like that. Yeah, gotta get leecheckers.org before someone else snatches it up. Then you'd have to do, like, leecheckers.organization or something. Leecheckers.training. Uh, what else is new? This is compiled yet. Oh, hey, look, it didn't blow up this time. Um, that kind of means that maybe I updated it right. Which I don't believe, because whatever. What is game completion rate? Yeah, it means you're completing your games on time. Works for me. Um, who know right first and win? Black and white has three moves. Open this. I guess that is a question. Uh, how to know? How to view more than nine of your current games at a time? Um, edit the source code. No, I I thought I've uploaded this because I wanted to see an answer to it. Okay, we're gonna upload it now. I don't have an answer, but it'd be cool if somebody knew how to answer that. Um, rather, I think that'd be a cool feature, which is why I'm not saying, yeah, why I'm not answering the question. Um, oh, Lee Checkers is available for 17 a year. Nice. I wonder how much could you get Lee Chess with just one S for? Somebody's got to be typoing that. And I'm sure you could get a few ads presented and make a buck or two. It's probably not enough to be worth it. And it definitely would be a case of trolling. But, um... And then you put up a big iframe and then frame Lee Chess inside it. And, I don't know. People play on it and you keep your ads. Oh, somebody owns it. Damn, I've been beaten to it. Oh well. I tried. Um, I attempted. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't recall. Let me check if this is a thing. Okay, I didn't think so. Oh, it's just a cookie cutter page. Dude, they sell cookie cutters? No, that's not what you mean at all. Um, okay, line 168 still doesn't work. Let's take out all this mapping stuff. Situation. Um, now, what did I break? Get diff. Yeah, so now the only thing I broke is I changed that declaration. Let's see, where's the first point where I run into some kind of contention here? Oh, with domain for sale. Huh. I'm sure they'll find some fool willing to accept it for whatever they're selling for. Um, oh right, bingo chess. Um, so, man, in yesterday's stream I got so sidetracked finally fixing that rating thing, I'd forgotten that, um, I was going to try to make bingo chess more stable. Um, but I remember now that my precursor, the thing I wanted to do before getting bingo chess stable, is make sure I understand that Twitch integration thing. 
<laughs> Zug has a lot of excellent ideas and fantastic code skeletons. Um, uh, the meat on those skeletons works well enough that the sites are able to run for what he's doing. Um, but yeah, my goal with that would be just try to get it to do a stable build and a stable deploy onto my server. Um, and really not intending to take it a whole lot further than that, unless I have some great idea, but I don't. Um, but yeah, I think... Let's go back to my site. So let's go to the relay thing. It should still be up. I found the other day that Elasticsearch, which is something I had installed for Leechess for my instance, um, was just going haywire in the background, and it was still running like Elasticsearch 1.5.2, and the latest is like 2.5.1 or something. Um, but yeah, I need to get Relay Chess with that Twitch integration. Um, it's funny, somebody did actually mention that variant. I'm trying to remember in what context they mentioned it, but they're like, oh, but the site's down. And I'm like, yeah, but it never... It's collecting passwords and stuff, and was... I still need to get the OAuth stuff working. Well, I think he's busy. He hasn't entirely disappeared. Um, we did... I did have a chat with him, and we agreed that we're taking the site down because it's unpopular, but... Or that we don't want to... We're not putting any active development effort into it at the moment, and it's not going very far. Very people, very few people are using it. Um, we had a whole. Um, it wasn't a Trello. It was maybe it was. Yeah, I think it was Trello. We had a whole issue tracker of all the things that were absolutely vital for getting it live, and I'm like, great, that's wonderful that you think that these features are all necessary for people to use it. Um, however, and I still have that Trello, and we'll return to it at some point, I guess, now that he's... <laughs> you hear that? That goes off 10 a.m. first Tuesday of the month. That goes off first Tuesday of the month at 10 a.m. because if there is an actual emergency, you need to be able to make sure that you can hear that. That's what happens when you live in Tornado Alley. Just saying. Um, when there are emergencies, um, that siren uh, lets people know, go seek shelter. Or... And yeah, they probably hear that too. Oh, um, well, funny you should mention that concept. Oops, I typed in the address wrong. Um, let's turn off the music there. Um, funny you should mention that. Chess variant site. It has all the chess variants on the web. Funny you should mention that. They have 1,000-something chess variants on the site. Nobody uses it, but it's there. And it has engine support. It does not have analysis boards. Um, but yeah, this is your one-stop shop for all the chess variants. Like I said, great idea. Nobody uses it. Most of the variants have engines and can actually defeat you. Um, so, yeah, chessvariants.com. That also said, um, I'm not hooked on the idea of this being ad funded and not like crowdfunded and stuff. And I mean, I don't know how they do all their funding, but it's ad supported. There was a warning there that says, Please disable your ad blocker. We need money to keep our site alive. Not too fond of that model, um, we'll say. So there's the open source internet chess server. 
I found somebody, some groups of individuals worked on this. I make this work a lot better. Um, this is the Capablanca chess server that supports variants. It's got S chess. It's got more things than... It's got like Bertolini chess or whatever it's called. Bertolina. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. I brought up to date the help documentation. Fix the time seal. Everything works. Um, nobody uses it either. But um, I've started to try to get game history and analysis working and then like I've advertised this a thousand times across the Lee Chess forums, Discord, and my own stream, and other people's streams. Nobody uses it. Uh, no, it is, there's a client for this. I've told people where to find this. Um, that's okay. Uh, export Chess. Um, yeah, it's Tim Mann's export client. It's beautiful. It's got wonderful artwork. It's still something that the author's maintaining and adding new stuff to all the time. Um, yeah. Right. That's the point, is that this isn't going to work that well because you have to go download the client and it doesn't work on every operating system and it's always under development and it's just a hassle. You'd rather have a web page. But if you really wanted to play some games, some variants, and um, my contention here with actually doing this is like that bots can participate on this server. Um, and so this is like plan B when there's a variant that people absolutely need and Lee Chess um, just isn't able to get around to it. Um, that is, unless we have stuff like this where other developers help put this together because I'm bad at web development. Um, yeah, I think that's also a way to get banned, but like put it on a few focused subreddits and I don't know, advertise it, but I think um, ha it was lacking game history anyway. I didn't get game history quite working, and I, in my opinion that that's pretty important. Um, right, so... Um, yeah, I think that maybe if I get game history going under there, and then if I can get a bot running stably with that server, then there's some point to people using it. But having to use a client is a huge turnoff. Um, so I don't know that it's actually going to gain any popularity. I saw that there was another client out there by... Oh, what was it? I don't remember, and it flusters me that I don't recall. But there is another chess client that's supposed to um, work well with uh, FACS style servers. Um, I don't know, eventually there... Yeah, no, it wasn't Raptor though, it's like something newer that... No, Gen Chess is even older. Um, there's something that held some promise, and I forget what it was, and it flusters me, I don't remember, but I'm sure at some point um, it'll come to me what it was. Um, that might be more flashy, might compel people to install this, because export is kind of a dinosaur. It works excellently, but it's not flashy in a um, new century, new millennium sort of way. Um, but yeah, I think if more export, uh, I'm sorry, if more ICC style clients emerge, um, then people might be more drawn to do variants. Especially if there's a client that works for both ICC and for um, ICSs in general. Um, I'm a bit disappointed that Baba's Chess both is not open source, is stop, well, isn't very active in development, and does not work with uh, ICS's, at least does not work with my ICS. I'm a bit flustered that it only, it requires that you, the server name be like Free Internet Chess Server, or that it be the Internet Chess Club. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah, you could do something pretty fancy like that too. Um, but I think somebody's eventually going to make a client that works with ICC and Fix and stuff. And if that ever comes about, then I can bother trying to support a multivariant server. But having to support a client that isn't that flashy to begin with is, yeah, it's not the most successful endeavor. Um, oh, okay. So this is what I was struggling with earlier. Take back situation here. So it has a type mismatch that we found a map of take back situation when we actually needed a take back situation. Um, because take backer, yes, needs a take back situation. That's the deal. Okay, so this take backer does not be, need to be changed. Take backer. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Locate take backer dot scala grep um, home Leela. Wait, what? Oh, grep home Leela. So this one. Um, this needs a take back situation. Wait. This needs the take back situation, I don't know, for a given color. So what I need to do is edit line 168 and get it that attribute that it needs, which. Um, This returns the situation. Okay, yeah, I think this is what I need to mutate. I don't know how it managed to paste that in there, but um, it did something pretty smart, I guess. Um, okay, but yeah, I don't think dot get is returning what I need either. Like, I might have to just put in a case statement that says, go look inside this map, see if you can find something for the given key, and under the condition, again, using a case statement, um, I might need to bother with that abstraction, um, because there's the possibility that that key theoretically might not be in the map, even though I know it is, because there's only two colors in a chess game and they are white and black, and so I know that dot .get is going to return successfully, but the language doesn't know that, so the language at time of compilation is going to tell me that you can't do that, um, and I guess there's no way to say, yes, I know I can actually do this, so You'd think that we would offer some kind of special map that's like a color map, where you define the two colors, white and black, and you know that those are the keys, and those will always be the keys of this map, and there won't be any more or any fewer keys, and I don't know. Oh, I see. Wait a second. Okay, where I'm doing the assignment take back situation, equal situation, is incorrect. This needs to be updating just the situation for the given color. But yeah, also get is not a member of map. So I actually had this coded right earlier. Um, at least I think I did. Um, 
So this needs to say update pov.color like this. And similarly for no, we need to update the situation. And here, this should actually say map instead of get, and map instead of get. Um, I suspect that also won't compile for some silly reason. Let's try playing the computer. Actually, this is all browser-based, so uh, the fact that I'm doing the compilation in the background isn't going to distract it at all. It's still going to be, like, merciless. Um, yeah, let's push the pawn. Push this pawn. Can it come up with a strategy here? Uh, let's take that. Okay, so now we have a knight that moves like a rook. That's actually kind of inconvenient. Okay, so my rook knight and bishop are both defend are all defending those things. Um, I guess we'll push e3. That was weird. Saw a little black box on my screen there. Wonder what that's supposed to mean. Take one of these. Take one of those. Oh, we're in check. We are so in check. No, we can't even castle out of check, but we can move our king twice. Okay, this can still move like a knight, thankfully. Oh. Oh, have I confused it again? What's my console say? Best move e5h2. Cannot read property from of null. Under g1, g2. E5H2 is an illegal move. Ha ha! Victory! It tried to play Bishop H2. The Bishop's pinned. So, victory is mine. Take it while I can. Alright, so... Uh, overloaded method value map of alternatives um, cannot be applied to color. Chess.color map cannot be applied to color. Um, so I'm guessing map is the wrong way to get an element out of a map. Scala, retrieve element from map. Um, now I don't want the map.head element, I just want the... Um, how do I extract an element if I know that a key is one of the keys of a map? Okay, so this is the syntax to access a thing in the map. There's no map. You don't need to call map on this. Just, um, you just say, I want this element. I think also when I say update on a map, um, this creates a copy, but I think I need to update my reference because the original map's immutable. Um, is there anything new here? King's Gambit is a mistake. I mean, 3f4 is a pretty bad mistake in the King's Gambit. 
You probably want to play 2f4. But, um... Okay, so we can search the questions by this tag. Apparently there's only one question that uses the tag https colon slash slash leechess.org slash wigy4fy slash white octothorpe3. Um, it's only one question that uses that tag. I wonder why. But no, it's interesting that you could use a tag um, to actually link to a game. Um, there's probably should be a better way to present that, like showing a little mini board uh, of what that game looks like. Or a thumbnail or something. But okay, let's go there. Ha! <laughs> ha! Okay, this game doesn't exist, does it? Uh, that's even better. Uh, is this an active user or have they quit? Right, so how do you link to a game that doesn't exist? I I guess your opponent must have cheated or something and the game doesn't exist anymore. That confuses me. Alright, so required. Oh. Okay. Required a function. Um Mm-hmm. So, I guess I have this backwards now. Now that we have a function. Okay, player ref, based on this handle. Um, Probably should read something more like more like this, and our function should be what some block of code here. Okay, two, three, four. Actually, let's take this, drop it down here, indent all this stuff. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then, um, this function should apply using a point of view. need to call update here anymore because we're calling update above. Um, wait, wait, wait. So uh, this is so confusing. Uh, I'm gonna have to redefine this function. But also, what is events? Events is like the return value. Um, take back or yes does not... Hmm. I mean, it needs visibility to a take-back situation, but it's... Let me look at the definition of update and try to interpret what it is that I should be doing here. I know I need a function. I just need to figure out what's the interface for this function. F of A to A. So given something of type A, transform to type A. But also, um, I guess I should actually look at take backer now. So the definition of yes is going to return a future of events and a situation.
Does it really need to return? I mean, what's consuming this event's future anyway? Why does this have to return that type? What uses those events? I guess I could see... Um, so this returns... Oh, this consumes... Um, returns events. But then what happens with take back? Yes. Do we actually use those events somewhere? Yeah, so we have to send an event when we're done. Um, so that means that yes, we need to update the entry in the map, but also we need to send the event. I guess that's why we have a take backer. So... Maybe the right thing to do is make Takebacker more intelligent in terms of... Um, it doesn't need a Takeback situation, but it needs a map of both colors Takeback situations because it's going to update that map. I guess that's what we're doing. Um, so let's take map. Map is natively defined, right? Okay, yes. Um, it's a color map of... Um, round dot take back situation. So this is the parameter type that we need to pass uh, into take backer. Instead of this data type, it needs the other data type. And it needs to return um, similarly a map of stuff. Um, and then that reduces the workload on this in terms of it doesn't have to get the situation based on the color anymore. All of this just so that a player who just hit the no, don't do a take back button can now offer a take back. Um, but it seems reasonable to me, so... Um, okay. And then we're going to get back a situation, which is going to become the new situation. And then over here, um, map, uh, okay, so match point of view of this. If the opponent proposed to take back, um, okay, so we're either going to do a single or a double take back. Um, send out a notification, update the player, but where do we actually update the situation? So we're returning a two element tuple. Um, oh, okay, so here's where we're saying situation uh, reset. That's going to be our function that we're applying. But um, we need to say, instead of situation dot reset, we need to say situation dot, sorry, yeah, situation dot update. Um, oh. That's not good, though. Um, is this a static thing that I can access? No, we don't have statics in Scala. Um,
If the opponent's an AI, double game. Oh wait, we're saying single and double. What does double do? This actually moves the pieces around on the game, but doesn't update the take back situation itself. Um, but when a player offers a take back and the other opponent accepts, then the function we want to apply is reset. Um, wait. Yeah, situation though is wrong. We need to use this. That's the function for uh, color. But we also want to like apply that for all colors, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I think we do. Um, so how do we apply a function for all colors? Um, Oh, we just create a new instance, basically. Which means we don't need to do any of this for all stuff. Um, okay. Um, Take backer is going to need to um, is there a way to say for each element in my map apply a function? No. There very well could be, but there isn't right now. Um, can do this and then do um, dot update color dot black comma take back situation dot reset uh, it's not enough there we go this should compile at least this part of this file should compile um, similarly, this is the data type we need to pass into no. It's going to return a, another map. Because this has to return, um, yeah, well, you get the point. Um, Okay, let's see how far we get with compiling this. It's probably not going to compile. Uh, but yeah, still, it's cool that I defeated the computer here. Um, community page coming soon. Yeah, one thing that we were thinking about was um, having a persistent chat for two players across all the games they play. Not even Leechess has done that, and even Leechess has thrown around the idea and said this is just way too hard. But it seems to me that like Discord should just be plugged in right here. Discord should be our community. You shouldn't have to go to some external thing to integrate with Discord. But or I've even thrown around the idea that we could have like an IRC window here, or some other kind of forum or something. But if setting up anything here is a great deal of effort. And it'd be best to like host this in a way that doesn't require um, resources on this server. Um, I don't know like why Discord hasn't tried to do a website plugin sort of experience, as far as I can tell. But it seems like that would be a reasonable thing to have. Um, But yeah, 
I'm gonna see if I can fix this to instead of log in and register. Because the problem with this is then you have to have a mail server to notify people when they forget their passwords. Um, I have to see if I can do OAuth. Um, maybe I just go on to that if I'm too frustrated with the stuff I'm trying to touch right now. Um, oh, color not found. Okay, this app is still colorblind. Six errors found. Class, etc. does not exist. Um, okay, so color is defined in chess. Try to compile that again. Um, I suppose I don't need my other Lee Chess window open there. Um, is there anything new on GitHub in terms of issues to worry about? Nope, we're still doing fine there. Um, our tests doing okay. I think so. Uh, we did just push out an AI update. Some some servers were running a two-month-old version of the engine, which made some pretty hideous blunders. Um, I think I finally fixed the move ordering issue as of like July 1st, so it's good to not have to worry about that then. Um, I can see my other console. It's, um, it's going pretty crazy trying to compile take back situation. Let me terminate this console I've got going in the background. I found five errors. Um, but yeah, I had like leeches going in the background here and compiling in the foreground, and that's confusing everything. Um, okay, it's going to gracefully shut down the Mongo driver. And not send emails because I don't have an email server compiled or I don't have an email server configured. Um, no, no, no. Can it just terminate? There we go. So we won't have this running leech us in the background while we're trying to compile it. Maybe this will work better. Take back situation not found. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, I think now I'm starting to create cyclical dependencies. Um, all to try to fix something that should not have been an issue in the first place. But that all presumes that the abstraction was perfect uh, when we first designed it, and it wasn't. Yep, there's really not a whole lot I can do here. I think this abstraction is severely complicated. Um, and what I'm trying to do uh, makes it even more complicated. It makes um, dependencies across packages that both depend on each other which is a bad thing. Um, and I could only break out this dependency if I took reset and changed its definition. Um, but I could only do that. Yeah, it's just a mess. So my first attempt here was to try to make take that situation something for which we have an entry for each color. That's not going to work because, um, well, it's just not. But also, second, like, if I try to make this a map of int and a map of options and stuff, that gets complicated, too. That means there's a lot more work to do inside decline and delay seconds and offerable and all that. So, it's status. Um, not sure how those silly files of one and tilde got created. They're gone now. 
Um, get launch shows that I did successfully add takebacks and simuls. I was trying to test it, did not test very well. But get checkout will allow me to revert stuff which is not working. And then we're back on this branch. All right, so I guess we move on to the next subject and forget about um, trying to do take backs and simuls because that's very complicated. And I've struggled here for like an hour trying to get that to test correctly. I did see a test failure at one point. I can't replicate it. I don't know why not. I wish I knew exactly what it was that I tested. I'm sure somebody will eventually exploit it, but. Um, as far as I can see, from my earlier testing, I was able to do takebacks and simuls. I didn't see any problems with it once I properly deployed the application, which is kind of a caveat. You have to make sure you deploy the application correctly. But um, so yeah, I guess moving on. Relay chess. Um, where did I put that? Here it is. Relay. 